Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain, and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for this seven-day-a-week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 296 of our trek, and yesterday we hiked the 16th trail of this trek, which was the Trail of Hell. Today we will explore the importance of balance in all areas of our life as we hike the Trail of Cultivation. There is a total of 18 trails on this trek, which we are calling the Principles of Spiritual Growth, which is adapted from a short book written by Miles J. Stanford. These practical lessons were instrumental in my spiritual growth as a young man seeking to create and live my legacy. As we continue on each trail of this overall trek, I trust that you will find this information both valuable and important in your own life, regardless of where you happen to be on your own faith trek. Each of the trails on this hike builds on the previous one, so if you have missed any of the days of our Wisdom Trek, please go to wisdom-trek.com to listen to them and to read the daily journal. We are recording our podcast from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. There is a lot of activity in and around the Big House this week. Sunday afternoon, I invested several hours varnishing the woodwork in the library. I have the trim on two more walls to apply the second coat, and then it is onto the floor. Hopefully, we will have the library completed by the end of this week, and then we can move on to the other front room, which we call the parlor. Our pair of hawks have been extremely busy this week and spending more and more time near the nest, which is right outside our upstairs office and is so enjoyable standing here during the day watching them. We can't really tell if they've actually laid their eggs yet, as we do see both of them still flying around, but there is usually one of them either near or on the nest. The female is noticeably larger than the male in this particular pair, and if this is the same pair of hawks as in previous years, it's either the fifth or sixth years of using the same nest. As spring is manifesting itself with the daylight lasting longer, the temperatures rising and the flowers blooming, it is time to start cultivating our gardens and fields in preparations for planting crops. As we head out on our hike today, we want to explore the important concept of our own spiritual lives on the Trail of Cultivation. This is the 17th of 18 trails, which makes up the trek that we're calling the Principles of Spiritual Growth. The cultivation of good habits and character traits in all areas of life is very important. As our children were growing up, and still to this day, I emphasize the importance of balance in everything that we do or are involved in. There can be little question concerning the importance of balance in our lives. It is so vital to everything that we come in contact, whether that's mechanical, physical, aesthetic, or even the spiritual realm. A faulty balance in any area of life often results in a breakdown and possible devastation to the surrounding area. This is also true as we think about cultivating and growing crops in our spiritual lives. In the agricultural world, there has to be a balance of the proper amount of rain, sun, nutrients, and temperatures for the proper growth to occur with any type of crop. When there is a proper balance, then the crops will produce a bountiful harvest that many can share in. As these crops are properly cultivated, all of its resources are initially used so that the plant can grow to maturity. Once it has matured, it can then start producing and what will later become a great harvest. In the same way with our spiritual life, each of us must be thoroughly cultivated before we can effectively cultivate others through us. As we go through the maturing process, there are areas of service that we can provide for God. It is important to realize, though, that until we are spiritually mature, most of our service on the way to maturity is for our own development, not so much for that of others. At first, as a growing believer, we think, or at least would like others to feel, that our service is effective all the time. But in time, we come to realize that the Lord is not doing so much through us as He is in us. Our Lord always concentrates on the greater need. We are not saved to serve. We are matured in our faith to serve. Only to the extent that cultivation reveals itself for what it is, are we in a position to assist others in their cultivation. We can best discover how to help cultivate others after we have been properly cultivated and understand ourselves. In Proverbs chapter 29, 19 indicates, As face is reflected in the water, so the heart reflects the real person. So we must have our heart matured. Just as it takes a period of time for crops to mature and produce a harvest, to counterbalance the knowledge of ourselves, God enables us to mature over a period of time, as mentioned in 2 Peter 3, verse 18. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we mature spiritually, in our excitement as a Christ follower, we are tempted to pull or push others towards spiritual maturity and then wonder why it's taking them so long to learn and why they seemingly are apathetic in their understanding and concern. 
we soon forget the many years that it took, and in the wandering of our own wilderness ways, that the Lord had to traverse with us in order to bring us over our Jordan and into the Canaan land. Spiritual maturity does take time, and the timeline is different for each Christ follower. We need to allow God to cultivate in us our spiritual growth and maturity. Let's look at an example of Moses. Moses had all the wisdom of the Egyptians, yet his idea for delivering Israel was to slay the Egyptian. He had to be trained in God's ways, which meant that he spent 40 years in Midian as a shepherd. After Moses had been cultivated sufficiently, he was then sent back to Egypt. God told him not to trouble about Israel, but to go directly to Pharaoh, the cause of the Israelites' chains. God didn't train the nation of Israel at first, but the leader to lead Israel. God seeks to get leaders trained in the proper knowledge of his ways who will help to lead other people. To the extent that we learn how our fathers had to handle us through the years, we will then understand how he would have us to share with others. We must be cultivated to be cultivators. It is not up to us to determine the spiritual growth or timeline of another. We need to leave that in the hands of the master farmer. We cannot force growth in another person any more than we can force an apple to grow and ripen before its time. If we try to force growth in another person, they will never mature properly or to be able to live the rich and satisfying life that is possible. Through the strength of Christ living in us, we are responsible for our own growth, which should include walking a life in integrity before others, but we are not responsible for the growth of others. As the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5-7, through 7, After all, who is Apollos and who is Paul? We are only God's servants through whom you believe the good news. Each of us did the work that the Lord gave us. I planted the seeds in your heart, and Apollos watered them. But it was God who made it grow. It is not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What is important is that God makes the seed grow. On our trek, the principle of spiritual growth, today we learned a valuable lesson in the growth on the trail of cultivation. We need to focus on becoming mature ourselves, and through our example of mentorship, provide the proper cultivation for others to grow. Tomorrow we will finish our current trek with the 18th trail, which is the trail of continuance. Every trail that we do hike will help us to grow and live our legacy each day. So encourage your family and friends to join us, and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, creating a legacy. That will finish our podcast for today. Just as you enjoy these daily doses of wisdom, we ask you to help us to grow Wisdom Trek by sharing it with your family and friends through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person as you meet with them and invite them to come along with us each day. The journal for today's trek can be found at wisdom-trek.com. Thank you for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.